Thanks, Sarah. Ticks can be found year-round in North Carolina, but tend to be the most active in late spring, summer, and early fall. Today to tell us a little bit more about tick-borne illness is health educator for Wake County, Carla Piedrita. Thanks so much for joining us today, Carla. Oh, thank you for having me and good Abs morning. Absolutely. So tell us where are we the most likely to find ticks? We would be most likely to find ticks in a place like we're in today. So that means like a shaded area that has lots of trees around. Um, usually there'll be high brush or high grass that they'll be hiding in and even leaf litter like around your home you might find them in leaf litter but also you have to think a little bit about whether your pets might be going out into areas like that if you're letting them off the leash or something and then they're coming back in they might be bringing ticks with them. So Carla tell us some of the most common places that we can find ticks on a human body or a pet's body. Well ticks really like um, warm moist places so they tend not to like dig into your legs so much they crawl up your legs and then they'll like settle in your groin or maybe in your waistline up under your arms uh, like the back of your neck in your hair warm places so what are some of the things that need to be done in order to avoid getting bit by a tick so of course the most important thing that you can do is avoid tick habitats like this one but if you know you're going to be out in them um, you know, then it's great if you can put on light colored clothing like I'm wearing. You, you want to tuck in your shirt. You want to wear a long sleeve shirt, long pants. You want to tuck your pants into your socks. That way you, they're just less likely to be able to get on you. Of course, you'd want to wear um, a tick repellent. You want to make sure that your pets have tick repellents on them as well. So in spite of taking precautions, some people may still get bit by a tick. If this happens, what's the best way to maybe remove that tick? It's really important if you get bit by a tick and you find a tick on you that you remove it as soon as possible. Like I was saying earlier, if um, you remove the tick within 24 hours, the likelihood of getting sick is much less. Um, so the way you need to remove a tick is you want to grasp the tick with tweezers as close as you can to the skin and then pull it out sh uh, slowly but surely. You don't want to just like yank it or, or t twist it or anything. You just want to pull it out slowly but surely. And um, then you want to disinfect the wound. You want to wash your hands and you also want to um, disinfect the tweezers that you used. Then of course you would need to visit your doctor um, if you have any symptoms of being sick within the next 30 days. So not all tick bites will make someone sick, but what are some of the symptoms that might indicate an illness? All the different tick illnesses have slightly different symptoms, but some of the common ones are, like I said, fever, uh, just generally feeling lousy. Some, especially kids, might feel like they're having vomiting or diarrhea, a little bit of nauseousness, that kind of thing. One of the most common rashes that you might see here in North Carolina, North Carolina is the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever Rash, which would be um, a little tiny, it's, um, it's kind of a red rash that kind of comes up mostly on your arms and legs. Uh, it can be on the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet, which makes it different from other rashes. The other type of rash that you might see would be what we call a bullseye rash and that's where the tick, say the tick bites you here, then you see this slowly expanding rash that might get bigger and bigger, it actually might get quite large. Um, what you don't have to worry about is if the area that, that you remove the tick is just a small um, bump, you know, it could be even an inch across, it's red, that just means your skin's irritated from having that tick attached and that's not something that we worry about too much. If any of those things come up in the next 30 days after you're bit by a tick or after you've been in a tick habitat, then you definitely would want to go visit your doctor. And even, Jennifer, if you're not feeling, if you're feeling sick and you haven't had a tick bite that you know about, if it's spring, summer, or fall, you really want to go visit your doctor anyway. Um, because you can't be sure if you've been in tick habitats, it's possible that you had one on you and it dropped off. So Carla, where can people find the best information on tick-borne illness? Well, of course, our website's a great place for information about tick-borne illness in North Carolina, especially Wake County, and that's wakegov.com. And the CDC has amazing information about ticks, and they have information about ticks from all over the U.S. So if you've been traveling somewhere else, you might want to find out about what diseases are found in those other states. You could go to cdc.com. Of course, NCSU, the entomology department, has great information about ticks, as does um, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. 
Carla, thank you so much for being here with us. That was great information considering we're still in the summer, heading into fall. We know that we need to be a lot more cautious for those tick bites.